uh, we have started this formally as a tour of Southeast Asia. And today our esteemed guest is from Bangladesh, Dr. Minara and her team. We are also thankful to Dr. Rajesh Mehta for uh, in initiating this uh, big momentous uh, uh, step towards uh, community of practice expanding to other countries as well. So today's session would be introduction to bundles, their use and application for improving maternal and newborn care. Our focus country would be Bangladesh. Uh, briefly, this uh, session would be consisting of uh, 40 minutes of uh, deliberations followed by 20 minutes of expert Q&A session, question and answer. The first uh, session would be taken by Dr. Minara Chaudhary. She would be uh, dealing with bundles. What is the big deal? Then we have Dr. Mamun Bhuyan, an introduction to the postnatal care bundle. And then we have Dr. Muntasir Moin implementing and measuring the outcome of postnatal care bundle. After that, we'll have uh, 20 minutes of question and answer session. In between, if you have any queries and uh, please post them to a question and answer session or your chat box. We will be taking those questions subsequently. So uh, brief introduction of uh, Ms. Minara Chaudhary. Ms. Minara Chaudhary is MA, APM, ICSA. She is the uh, country director of IHI's work in Bangladesh. She is working with government of Bangladesh and development partners, leads a team of local resources and international faculty with an aim to reduce maternal and newborn mortality in 10 participating districts for a USAID funded project. She is also the project director for a multi country project funded by Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation on designing maternal and newborn spaces for quality of care. Prior to joining of IHI, she worked for a Hamad Medical Corporation in Doha, Qatar for 10 years in improvement, improvement focused roles and initiated the first value improvement program in Qatar. Worked with the National Health Services in UK in different roles. She has masters in management of change from University of Sussex, UK. She commenced her career in project management within the banking sector where she qualified as a company secretary and uh, attained project management qualifications. So we welcome uh, Ms. Minara Chaudhary. Uh, Minara, the floor is all yours. I'll be subsequently requesting Ashna to introduce the uh, subsequent speakers. So, so Sushil, uh, Minara, uh, I request you to please. Sushil, just a yeah. second. Before we uh, move to Minara with uh, your permission and Dr. Minara's permission, we also have an esteemed uh, guest here. We have Dr. Than Cho from UNICEF, Bangladesh okay. Country Office. Uh, Dr. Than, thank you so much for making it uh, to this uh, first session of Communities of Practice mm -hmm. opening up to Southeast Asia. And thank you so much for your esteemed presence. Sir, we are indeed delighted to have you. And heartfelt welcome. Thank yes. you so much. So welcome Dr. Dr. Rajesh Mehta formally. Thank you we also much. welcome Ankur, who has been a great friend, mentor, and, uh, and a supporter of Nationwide Quality of Care Network. And also he's been looking after many of the uh, good improvement projects in uh, Southeast Asia. So welcome, Ankur. And I will request uh, Ms. Minara to please uh, begin this uh, deliberations. Oh, thank you very much. So we'll just share our screen. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we will just uh, share our screen. Uh, so uh, I'd like to tell you and share with you the journey that we've been through uh, in Bangladesh um, and how we've used them to improve maternal and newborn care. Next, please. So what are we gonna to cover today? First of all, we're gonna cover why are we using the bundles? Um, what are they? How do we define them? So a little bit of introduction to bundles. We're then actually gonna take you through a couple of bundles because we wanted to demonstrate um, uh, two aspects uh, of the bundles. First of all, the clinical aspects of two bundles, essential newborn care, and postnatal care, and also the practical aspects. So that's really the implementation guideline uh, and our experience from what has actually worked uh, in Bangladesh. Next, please. So uh, you've met our team already. Um, so uh, myself, along with uh, Dr. Mamon and Dr. Montasir have been uh, looking at this work and really designing this work over the last two years. Uh, so here is our story. Next, please. Next, please. 
Okay, so just a little bit of background about the project that I work for. Uh, it is a USCID funded project. It's called Mamoni Maternal Newborn Care Strengthening Program. And what you can see is that there are four results. Uh, first, first result is around health system strengthening. The second one around quality, the third one around demand management, and the fourth is really around improving the national capacity. So the part highlighted in blue is really what we focused on. How do we improve the quality of MNC services and also the governance uh, of quality of care? Next, please. So this is, this is how we started uh, our work. This is a traditional uh, approach to any, uh, any intervention. Uh, that, that is designed. First of all, we looked at what's the definition for the desired state. What are we, that is, what's the future state? Where do we actually want to be? What's our vision? So for Bangladesh, it was around reducing maternal and newborn mortality. Um, where are we now in terms of MNHQI? So it was really important to understand uh, in our 10 focus districts, where is it that we are um, in terms of maternal newborn health and quality improvement? And really because of the way that we work, this is an integrated approach. Um, and then determining what are the gaps and then developing those actions. So up until here, pretty standard process. Um, we then went through, through initially into a very traditional approach. First of all, we identified the interventions. We worked on a scheme of developing capability amongst frontline providers. We prepared numerous checklists and then we started to monitor compliance. I have to say that that didn't really work that well. Um, and this is when this thought, this quotation came to mind that insanity really is doing the same thing over and over again, and then expecting different, different results. So really for quality improvement, uh, traditionally we've done the same kind of things. Um, and then we really tried to move and we said, right, okay, now is the time to try something new. Um, because by doing the, uh, doing the previous method of building capability, looking at checklists, looking at individual processes, all we were doing is doing the same and the providers weren't energized. Um, they really didn't understand what we were doing, how we were doing it. So we needed to do something different. Um, so what we started with is we moved away from the traditional quality improvement training uh, and Bangladesh actually already had a five day long quality improvement PDCA training. There are various trainings that are already developed. And what we did was we customized an IHI uh, training module. It's called Quality Improvement Basics. And it's actually a one day program. We made it very practical, very hands-on and very related to the problem that they're solving. The advantage of that really was that we had a very engaged audience and a one day course helped them to to develop those basic skills enough so that they can start their quality improvement projects, but not so much or so detailed that it left, you know, it was just a theoretical based pro process. We then started to work on the bundling approach using clinical guidelines. Um, and we thought we'd start with something very simple because as we go through the continuum of care, obviously it becomes more and more complex. So we actually, our first, uh, ant first bundle was antenatal care. Next, please. So what's a bundle? So actually, um, this is a definition from IHI. So IHI developed the concept of bundles to help healthcare providers more reliably deliver the best possible care for patients. And here's the important part, undergoing particular treatments with inherent risks. The bundle is a structured way of improving processes and outcomes. It's a small, it's a set of small evidence-based practices, sometimes three to five normally, that when you perform collectively, collectively and reliably, again, this is the important part. If you do one and not another, it's not, a, it's not compliant. So you have to do all of the steps in the bundle collectively and reliably. And that's when they've been proven to improve patient outcomes. And that's what we're going to demonstrate to you today. Next, please. So, so why is a bundle so special? Um, so there is, it does come from a body of science uh, and I'm sure that, that everybody is aware. Um, we do need to make sure that we apply the bundle or it's, it's executed with consistency. And again, the most important part is that we tie all of these different elements together into a package of interventions that must be followed for every patient, every single time.
So if you remember nothing else from these two Bundle 101 slides, please remember that Bundle must be followed for every patient every single time. Next, please. So why did we introduce bundles in Bangladesh? I've already kind of talked about some of the operational problems. We needed to do something innovative. Um, innovation by definition can be anything that's not been done before, but we needed to do something new. We needed to move beyond those individual components. We needed to do something impactful, not something that took a long time or couldn't be scaled by the government. We also needed to do something that was results oriented. We needed to demonstrate that this approach works. And of course, at the end of the day, everything must be sustainable. Next, please. So um, I won't dwell into this. This is our driver diagram for Marmoni quality improvement work, but really this is a map of why we are where we are. Um, and the secondary drivers really um, are the ones that you can see that we have different intervention packages from there. And I'll talk to you about that in a, in a bit more detail. Next, please. So how did we go about this? Um, really, one of the things I want to emphasize is the importance of integrating MNH and QI. We can't just think of QI as standalone. Um, QI has a little bit of a bad name, unfortunately, uh, because it's seen as a standalone, it's seen as something separate. So when you go to the frontline providers, they think, oh, my day job is seeing patients and delivering MH care, and then I have to do QI on top of that. So this is something that in the Mamoni 10 districts, we've really worked at, uh, at at creating a different way and a different perspective. So we change, we're challenging the norms that no, QI is not additional. QI mm -hmm. is about delivering those results to everybody. So really determining the, the aim and creating a movement, clinical capacity building, facility readiness and community engagement is really important. Developing those m &H QI bundles, um, sorry, QI capacity development, introducing packages, which are your m &H QI bundles, implementing them, looking at the data analysis, regular monitoring and coaching, and then doing sustainability. So that's really the whole approach for this. Next, please. Um, again, I won't dwell on this side. So we did actually start to look at the logic model from WHO. And we tried to make sure that the bundles were aligned for provision of care, experience of care, access to care, and also looking at management and organization. Next, please. Here is the map of all of the bundles that have been prepared. And obviously today, we're just gonna to talk to you about a couple of bundles, essential newborn care uh, and postnatal care, but we have these bundles already, um, already prepared. Uh, most of these have, uh, all of them are already in the field in one way or another. So obviously during pregnancy, we have the antenatal care bundle and we start with a very simple antenatal care bundle with three or four components. We then prepared an extended A and C bundle, which includes components such as counseling for nutrition. Um, we have labor and delivery around correct use of partograph, on admission, during uh, de delivery, after delivery, and of course, non-pharmacological pain management. We have a suite of bundles around complications, newborn care, newborn complications, and postnatal care. So those really bundles span across the continuum of care. There may well be others that come along later, but for now, we are fairly confident that if we reliably look at each one of these processes and improve those processes, then we are going to improve the quality of care for mothers and newborns. Alongside those, we have a number of operational bundles where if we can really tackle these areas, we are gonna improve not just clinical care, but the experience of care. So let's just look at the patient flow one. Um, in our system, there are uh, mothers, pregnant mothers who are going between rooms, between one room and another. Um, and usually there's not signposting or there's a lack of signposting. So really we need to think about patient flow. I'll just take one other around discharge planning. Now in our system, um, discharge can be uh, can be improved um, because uh, the doctors can come and discharge a patient and then it can be a little bit hit and miss as to what happens next. So really focusing on discharge is really, really important. Next, please. 
So how were these bundles developed? Uh, I've already said that they were evidence-based. We used the strategies, clinical guidelines, standard operating procedures, all from Bangladesh. We also took into um, account subject matter experts' opinions. Uh, they could be from the professional bodies, from senior consultants, um, from clinical experts. And we did have that uh, design uh, discussion with those clinical experts. We used evidence-based practices and we also used WHO standards and guidelines. So all of those came together to really look at the content or develop the clinical content for those bundles. Next, please. Why is it working? So you'll be asking this question really because the bundles bring together clinical and operational Im improvements. They are tangible rather than theoretical. So we really worked on moving QI beyond the theory into a tangible, uh, with something with tangible outcomes. It's based on quality improvement, but actually it's more about improvement. It's about how do I make changes to what I do every day to make a difference? And, and, and that's what hits the heart of the providers. And we found that that works really well. It's related to a specific work area. It's not generic. It's, so if it's a midwife delivering antenatal care visits, then it's related to her work area. The visibility is high. We have visual display boards everywhere and displaying the data makes it real, both for the providers and leaders. This all or nothing approach is has been really impactful because when the provider has done three out of the four components of an antenatal care bundle, she, that's not counted as a compliant or one that it's a completed antenatal care visit. And that's quite startling. And in those early days, we had all the discussions uh, where providers felt, but I'm doing this. Uh, but you didn't do that one. So this all or nothing approach is improvement important. Understanding st uh, standard work uh, practices, the holistic approach, and then the leadership arounds and engagement. Next, please. So what have we learned? Bundles have worked in Bangladesh because it was related to a work process practice. The results are demonstrated. Impact is can be seen. Um, you know, it was visible because of the visual display boards, the lack of compliance in one area could really, you could really see what was happening across the board. We built clinical capability alongside QI capability, and we engaged leaders in a way that they understood what their teams were doing. Okay, next please. So I'll hand over to Dr. Mamun who can take you through the next section. Dr. Ashina, would you like to introduce yeah, Dr. Mamun? Yeah, before begins, yeah, I will just introduce her. So, Dr. Dr. Mamun is MPH, CCD, and MBBS. So, he is a quality improvement implementation advisor for IHI's work in Bangladesh and is working with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and local delivery partners with an aim to reduce maternal and neonatal mortality in 10 districts. He's acting as focal point of learning collaborative primarily in 10 districts of Bangladesh. He started his career as a clinician and served for seven years and then joined as QI program specialist in URC. Prior to joining IHI, he spent five years in health and nutrition sector of Save the Children in Bangladesh as quality improvement manager and focal point of child nutrition and MPDSR project. He actively contributed in development of different technical guides in quality improvement field led by quality improvement secretariat under minister of health and family welfare bangladesh he was also involved in development of eminent training modules for primary health workers and he has worked with urc as program specialist to establish the management protocol of diabetes mellitus tuberculosis comorbidity in bidham hospital which is the first ever initiative in bangladesh so we welcome you sir and we request you to take over the presentation from here on uh, hi, everybody. Uh, am I clear to all? Yes, Dr. Mom. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes, you are audible. So, uh, Nabil, could you give me, I'll give my slides.
Uh, okay, so uh, as a part of uh, the student activities, I am going to give uh, a bit of, of sense on MNHQI bundles uh, in the next couple of uh, minutes. Next, please. Uh, at first, uh, moving to uh, antenatal care, which is the care undoubtedly will be necessary for each and every uh, newborn, irrespective of their uh, weight and birth place. It comprises, you know, it comprises five activities that immediately dry and drying and wrapping. Uh, uh, putting baby skin to skin care, then application of 7.1 percent for hexid in for heart care, initiation of breastfeeding with normal and delayed budding. Next, please. So, uh, if we look into the bundle, uh, our operational definition of, of this bundle actually uh, exactly refers to all of those except uh, delayed budding and will be applicable uh, for those babies who cried just after birth. Our another bundle, which is called resuscitation bundle, will take care of all those bundles uh, uh, as per needs. So next, please. Essential newborn care bundle has been demonstrating is results through two types of measures. One is for process measures and uh, another is outcome measures. Under process measures, the newborn, uh, essential newborn care bundle is demonstrates how the bundle is going on and uh, uh, whenever is all the components are to comply with or not. That as Minera said, there's all or none low. So if any any of the component of this uh, uh, under this process measure is missed, then the uh, it's not compliant with the minimum care. At the same time, we are very much eager to have the outcome measures, and obviously we try to find out uh, what proportion of baby, baby received their uh, quality as engineer care, and at the same time, what proportion of newborns uh, who had a normal body temperature in first copyright admission of nineteen after after birth. So next, please. Uh, though uh, you know that we are going to uh, place before you the essential remote care, but also in my menu there is uh, postnatal care. So uh, you know uh, 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 this is postnatal care uh, covers mother and newborns uh, from uh, uh, first hour uh, post delivery to 42 days of post delivery. And next uh, please. So this. And this care helps uh, to identify uh, and manage different maternal and newborn complications. Plus, mom and baby get uh, supports from uh, uh, for the new dimension of lives and their nutrition support. They are so for their uh, social and uh, 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 mental well-being and also their uh, postpartum family planning, counseling, and services. So next please, in Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, uh, our SOP recommends for three uh, visits uh, after facility level delivery and four visits for uh, home delivery and, which, uh, uh, and our bundles also take care of those things. Next please. Now look into the bundle. Uh, uh, this PNC bundle uh, is, is, is composed of detecting maternal danger signs, newborn danger signs, measuring BP, estimating a BP, uh, breast examination and counseling maternal danger signs and postpartum family planning and micronutrient supplementation, exactly which are the to our SOP. Next. Uh, in this operational plan, uh, the uh, operational definition, you could find all those uh, activities that I've uttered just uh, previously uh, uh, that our maternal uh, health SOP uh, recommends. And uh, in our operational bundle, uh, those mothers included who gave uh, uh, delivery at facility level. Uh, because uh, uh, home deliver, uh, we are not going to the for uh, home delivery uh, postnatal care uh, because of uh, some uh, implementation challenges. Now are on, we are only for facility level delivery, and we are uh, offering this bundle for facility level delivery also. Next, so uh, the purpose of this bundle uh, is the very purpose to detect all sorts of um, metal and newborn minor to major health problems, finding high BP, finding anemia, help in establishing breastfeeding by examining breast and cares for postpartum family planning and providing other supplementation and uh, ensuring that at least there are some sorts of nutritional supplementation. Next. So uh, again, the previous bundle, this bundle also demonstrating uh, results by measuring its uh, process, uh, which is composed of seven variables. And uh, also uh, that I told just before and the outcomes which is composed of six variables that focuses on uh, proportion of mother who got quality PNC and mother and newborn, proportion of mother and newborn who uh, who danger signs and mother with different levels of anemia. Next. 
So <laughs> a couple of the slides have been kept under this annexer. Uh, there are two or three more slides. So, so if you uh, wanted to know actually what uh, we want uh, more details about the operational definition and variables, you, you could find uh, those things in this uh, slides also. Us. So uh, this is everything from my side. Uh, in, in very short version, uh, I would like to pass uh, the microphone to my next colleague, Dr. Muta Sivai. Thank you. Thank you, sir. For our next speaker, we have Dr. Muntasir Moin Nabil. He is the Quality Improvement Implementation Advisor for IHI's work in Bangladesh. And he works with the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare and the local delivery partners to reduce maternal and neonatal mortality in 17 districts. He also acts as focal point of maternal and newborn health quality improvement to scale up initiatives primarily in the Manikand and Brahman Baria district of Bangladesh. He was previously a clinician for five years before joining International Center for Diarrheal Disease Research Bangladesh as a research physician. And prior to joining IHI, he spent two years in the health and nutrition sector of Save the Children in Bangladesh as a manager district implementation and divisional quality improvement coordinator for the Memoni project. He actively contributed to the implementation of quality improvement protocols in the field led by Quality Improvement Secretari Secretariat under the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare in Bangladesh. And he's also worked with ICDDRB for four years as a medical officer and research physician in maternal and child health in various research, including inactivated polio vaccine trial, type 2 monovalent oral polio vaccine trial, and accelerating implementation of national nutrition services. So the screen is all yours, sir. Hello and good evening, everyone. Can everyone hear me clearly? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay, thank you. So, Bangladesh has built over the past decades a good network of hospitals and health centers to provide the primary and reference healthcare to its citizen. As you can see, the country has well structured health system with three tiers of primary healthcare Upozala health complexes at the sub district level, union health and family welfare centers at the union level, which is comprised of many villages, and the community clinics at the ward level. And these are also backed by the district hospitals and maternal and child welfare clinic providing secondary level care at the district level and as the tertiary hospitals of various kinds are situated in a large urban area. Um, so as we, everyone is talking about these MNHQA bundles, our scope of implementation of these bundles are at the moment at the district hospitals, MCWCs, Upojela health complexes, and union level facilities where delivery service is readily available. We are also providing technical support to some private health facilities at the district level. Um, so, we are implementing the, we are using the model for improvement as the framework to guide the improvement work and implementing all this bundle through this model. It is a simple, but yet a powerful tool for accelerating improvement. This model has been using very successfully by almost currently 80 facilities in our country to improve many different healthcare processes and outcomes. As you can see, this model has two parts. The first part is contained with three fundamental questions, which can be addressed in any order yeah, what are trying to accomplish and what changes can we make that will result in improvement and how will we know that a change is an improvement and it is also followed by the plan do check act pdcs cycle which is to test changes in a real work setting the pdcs cycle guides the test of a change um, to determine if the change as as, uh, as an improvement so uh, to improve the quality for health service begins with identifying a specific focus area related to quality of care. And we have to select a specific problem, challenges, or opportunity for improvement. So the first target was to build a specific aim, which is something the service providers wants to improve. And the aim was always a time specific and measurable. Uh, it was also defined a specific population of patients or other systems that was affected. So uh, as you can see, it is a glimpse from the field. When we uh, gave these technical sessions or in the workshop, the participant or service provider, even the doctors, uh, senior staff nurses, midwives, and they 
build up their own improvement states, statements and they have a specific aim and target in which area they want to work. Some took antenatal care, some took essential newborn care, and some even took in correct use of partograph. So this session took is uh, like followed me. And during our improvement journey in Bangladesh, uh, we, uh, we found that the key to solving a challenge is to first to truly understand it. Often our focus shifts too quickly from the problem to the solution. And we try to solve a problem before comprehending, um, its, uh, comprehending its root cause. Uh, what we think is the cause, however, is sometimes it's just another symptoms. So after setting a specific aim, the service provider looked further to understand the current ongoing systems and the root cause of, of the challenge or the specific area they want to improve. So uh, to uh, make easy for them, we introduce some tools to them like process mapping, um, five wise and fishbone diagram. And this is uh, these all the tools which is used in a quality improvement method. I can also share you a glimpse from the field in many our training in group work, the service provider uh, took the fishbone diagram approach to find the root cause of a problem. It's in Bengali, but as in the head, uh, they are in these slides, they are taking uh, as the correct use of partograph. So they found the factors and the under they found, uh, they uh, brainstorm the causes that is a cause problem for doing this kind of thing. So after uh, setting an aim, and after finding a root cause analysis, then comes the testing the changes where we use the second part of the model for improvement, the PDCA cycle. So as you know, PDCA cycle is stand for plan, do, check, and act. In plan phase, the healthcare provider select and prioritize the problem, then does the root cause analysis using any of the tools they seems to fit for their cause, and they identify the intervention they want to, they want to implement. In the do part, they implement their in intervention and followed by the check part where the team check their effectiveness of the intervention. And so that I, as team, I, I am uh, mentioning that there will be, there is a QI team, which is led by mainly doctors or uh, senior consultants. And the part of the team is senior staff nurse, midwives. It depends on the facility who they are want to be and that team for this kind of quality improvement work. And finally, the act phase after doing this kind of thing, after check the effectiveness of the intervention, if this that is sustainable. So then they standardize the effective intervention to overcome the challenges. Mm. So without evidence, we cannot say what changes have been made or even the PDCA have worked or not. So we uh, so we hence a flow of data collection and sharing process were also in place in, uh, in these facilities. So uh, for the data sources, we uh, the service provider already, uh, as our government has their specific register, like uh, EMOC register or maternal or newborn care register. So the, uh, the data sources from this uh, regularly using register for record keeping, service provider keep record in a separate audit tool. And finally, it transferred into a digital management information system, which are, we are calling QMIS, Quality Management Information System. This is a project facilitated automated tool. Uh, where, when after finally we get this data in this automated tool, we can analyze the result and present it to the authority or in a learning and sharing meeting. And in case of data use or data sharing, as, by, uh, as you have been heard from, Dr. Minara from the first phase, we use a special visual display board in the facility. It is a one kind of board where the service provider put up their aim statement, put up their fishbone analysis, the data collection sheet, and they do a special annotated run chart by themselves to week, uh, and they do, uh, does it weekly to check the improvement work, if the graph is showing high or low, why this is happening. And they also write a short story of PDC of what they have been done. And as you can see, this is visual display board beams from the field. This board has been placed very strategically in the area they are working. Suppose they're working in correct use of partograph or essential newborn care. So this board will be placed inside of the labor ward. If they were working about the antenatal care, then the board will be placed 
beside the antenatal care room. Everything is done by the service provider themselves. They usually are these things. And our leadership or the team lead, they try to follow this board and they sit around this board once in a week when they got the time with the team and they discuss among themselves that what is going on. So this board is especially tells all the story about how the improvement work is going on and on. So I can share you some snap of results, what is going on. So this can, you can see the result from the essential newborn care. And this is for one district collaborative. We are starting, we have been doing our prototype district in Bangladesh is a Manikgaon district. We are uh, test, we have been tested many of bundle in here. Then we scaled up from in here. And this graph represent data from 11 high tier level facilities, just the district hospital and Upojela level facilities. And also it include two private facilities. And as you can see, when we commence this work, our baseline was zero because Actually, in the district uh, and within those facility, as my, my previous colleague said, the four components or essential newborn care were not measured on a regular basis or consistently. When you uh, when you go to uh, see to the GOB register, you may found there is a blank space uh, in the many of the uh, four components field. Uh, so, as you can see from the annotation on the graph, we had number of on job trainings. We ensure the logistic supply coordinate with uh, gynae ops and gynae consultant, pediatrics consultant. We made a sync between the labor unit and OT unit, and we use a continuous monitoring was done. So current our median is now 69.23%, and we are now currently performing around 93%. And the change idea for essential newborn care. So in a broad head, we uh, describe can be it can be described as a four broader head. So we try to disseminate the knowledge among the relevant service provider, which uh, we use on the job training, peer-to-peer -peer mentoring through the gynec consultant. And we introduce counseling on the late ANC and even the midwives were counseling about the essential newborn care during the labor trial. So we try to strengthen the proper documentation. So we, we are struggling, uh, we were struggling in the uh, in the uh, beginning and we are now also struggling. So in essential newborn care is the most struggling part is the skin to skin care. So we try to document the time of the skin to skin care with a baby note. We also try to document the time when the breastfeeding initiated but below the baby note. So, and we also uh, happen to know them the mark each column of essential newborn care properly on the EMOC register. Then the service provider start self monitoring and reviewing the progress and to find out the constraint where they make weekly reporting tools consisting of the four vital components of ENC as I've shared with you, the reporting audit tool and audit the components on weekly basis. And they all, always weekly updated the annotated run chart at the visual display board. So if anyone notice about the graph, if it is going up or it is going down. We got a numerous help from the leadership involvement. Uh, some special decision for the skin to skin care were taken in case of cesarean section. Uh, as you can see, in during cesarean section, many of the, it was not possible to give any skin to skin care. So, so at first in the early 2019, it was decided uh, the senior gynec consultant and team of gynec consultant they have decided that okay we are not uh, we are failing giving skin to skin care for two hours in the cesarean section room so try to first to do it in the first hour so they try to make that decision they they will try to give one hour in the OT room or a post operative ward then when the mother shifted to the post what then they will give another one hour of skin to skin care so our senior gynae consultant was always involved in on the job training and later on to review the project progress and as the visual display board they always work around same thing happened for the postnatal care as you can see the baseline was again zero because it was uh the PNC components were not measured consistently. Again, there are a lot of PNC components, as you can see. And this graph is for two districts, uh, Manikgonj and another one was Madaripur. And this graph represent almost uh, 36 facilities data in here. And as you can see, there is a sudden drop after October 2020. 
it is due to we have recently nine facilities have joined us with a part of the scale up and they need a takeoff time. So for the postnatal care and district collaborative two district, our median is at now in 80%. Again, for the change ideas for postnatal care, obviously the on-job training during the facility visit and even on the monthly sharing meeting was very helpful. And we started counseling with job aids. The service providers started counseling the family members during visit, during labor tire. They tried to reach the mother when they came for their baby's immunization. We, the service provider, with the help of the facility, ensure proper knowledge of documentation of the register. Also, the same thing happened here, audit the components based on weekly, um, weekly basis. And the special thing in leadership involvement, we have a we have a post called FWA, Family Welfare Assistance. We, the, uh, this, uh, this designated person uh, be, uh, is uh, responsible for the community awareness. They actually, they go to the door to door with many kinds of counseling aids. So we, uh, with the help of the leadership management of the uh, government of Bangladesh, we involve this FWA to increase awareness in the community uh, for the postnatal care. And, as a visual display board was also helpful in this kind of thing. So uh, to summarize the uh, to summarize the whole thing, uh, so we had an initiation session with the full district leadership before this kind of thing. So we developed the clinical capacity and make sure the logistics were in place. We also developed the basic QI capability. So that is a one day course, very simple. And these things all translated into the local languages. And, and, and right now we have now also created a number of district level coaches that they could actually take this forward. So clinical bundle training has been given where the facility had taken on an aim statement or selected a, an area of improvement. So we then continue this learning and sharing in a monthly government leadership meeting. And Finally, I think we have a review progress and a monitoring system through the government of Bangladesh and through our project. So thank you everyone. Uh, if is there any question or anything, I think we will take them now. Thank you. Over to you, host.